Hello friends and welcome. Today I'll be explaining the roles in Dota 2, specifically aimed at new players. So when you start this game, one of the first things you need to understand are the different positions. First of all, so you can pick what you want to play, but also you kind of want to understand what everyone in the game is trying to do so that you understand where you fit in that so you can fulfill your, your job and try to win the game. Now you've probably already read it on the screen here, but we call the positions hard carry, mid, off laner, soft support, and hard support. Frequently, we just refer to them by number. So position one, two, three, four, and five in that order. Now, if you're wondering why do we use those numbers, it refers to farm priority and it goes like this. So surprisingly, the number one position has the number one priority to get gold and experience in the game. And at the bottom of that list is the hard support. So they're gonna have the least gold and experience. That doesn't mean one role is more important than the other. If you think about it, they all have the same level of impact, but to have their impact, the hard carry needs to get a lot of gold and experience, and the position five doesn't need very much, and then you fill out the, the middle. So this might already be helping you decide what role you want to play. If you play games and you like hoarding gold, you like accumulating items, things like that, you want to be at the top of this list. And if you're more about simply doing things with very few resources, but still being able to have a lot of impact, you're going to probably want to be a support player. Now, where you go in the map is a little different from other games. So we call the Radiant. This is the bottom part of the map down here. This is the Radiant side. This is the Dire side. This bottom lane for the Radiant is the safe lane. Then, surprisingly, we have the mid lane and then the off lane. Why we call it safe versus off lane, you don't quite need to understand as a new player. It has to do with the, the way the map works makes this lane a little safer to be in than the off lane. So that's why we put the hard carry there. Uh, sneaking ahead a little bit if you're reading this list here. The other side of the map is not quite mirrored. Um, so you'll notice the dire bottom lane is actually the off lane for them, and their top lane is the, the safe lane. So that's why when you're talking about roles, we don't usually say this is a top laner or bot laner, things like that, because that's different depending on what side of the map you're on. We tend to say this is a safe lane hero, and that way it doesn't matter whether you're a radiant or dire, you know we're talking about the safe lane. Um, now, when you're in the game, people will still refer to going to the top lane or bottom lane, but that's because this is literally the top lane. And so if you say, we should go top, it doesn't matter if you're talking about the off lane or safe lane, you just know the top is that part of the map, we should go, we should go there. So when referring to positions, it's usually easier to think about safe lane, mid lane, and off lane. Um, now, the, the hard carry tends to go to the safe lane for reasons we'll get into in a little bit. The mid laner, surprisingly, in the mid lane, a very straightforward naming system for that lane. And the off laner goes into the off lane. The four support is typically marked in the enemy jungle. That's because the four support has a lot of flexibility where they go. So on this list, I said that they go in the off lane. And right now, that is true. Right now, a lot of people are playing two in the off lane, one in the mid lane, and two in the, the safe lane. So sneak peek, the five support goes there. But the four support has been known to move around a lot. So they might just roam around in general, going in between lanes. They might stick to the bottom lane and do something called a tri-lane where we have three heroes down there. And jungling specifically, not that common in Dota. So I wouldn't really recommend you thinking about that. The four support is not like a jungler, but there is some jungling sometimes. So when that happens, it can be the four support. Uh, so that's kind of the cool thing about Dota. There's a lot of flexibility. Sometimes the hard carry will go to the off lane, things like that. Uh, it's really cool that way, but also a little hard to explain to new players. So don't worry about that right now. These are their basic areas on the map with the four support, like we said, being usually in the off lane right now. And the enemy side is just going to be mirrored. The hard support and five support up here, mid, off laner, and the four support there. Now, there are some basic jobs in Dota. Let's not, don't even think about the roles yet. These are jobs in Dota that are just good to do in general. So as you play this game and you start to feel lost, try to remember these basic jobs. And if you try to do one of them, probably a good thing. You'll learn the nuance later. Don't worry too much. You're a new player. Now for these jobs, some people want to do the job. Some people want to help their teammates do those jobs. And some people want to focus on stopping the enemy from doing the job. At some level, everyone tries to do all of this. But you have to prioritize something because you can't do everything. 
So as we go through the roles here, I am going to have this little checklist so you can see that you prioritize doing this or stopping the enemy from doing this. But just remember, if you ever feel lost, just try to do something related to these five jobs. Getting golden experience, typically through killing lane creeps or jungle creeps, or taking objectives, so enemy buildings, or setting up vision by placing wards or dewarding. That may not make too much sense to you yet, but it will, don't worry about it. That helps you to take objectives, even though that itself doesn't sound like an objective. But when you can see where the enemy is, now you know where to move on the map. So it is a big part of Dota. And then finally, killing heroes. You do get some golden experience from killing heroes, but don't really think of it as a farming method. You don't look to kill heroes to get gold. You kill heroes so that they can't stop you from taking objectives, and that's why it's on the objective side here. Let's start with the hard carry. Do you like gold? Do you like farming items, hitting enemy heroes and killing them with big critical hits, huge damage numbers, that kind of thing? Then this is you. This is the hard carry. You tend to be the game-winning hero. You're the baby at the start. You're the weakest hero. Everyone's going to try to kill you. But at some point, if you get enough golden resources, you become the strongest hero in the game, and you can then kill everyone else in the game. So there's a big target on the hard carry's head. Everyone is trying to slow down the hard carry and kill them, because if you don't, the hard carry will kill you. Because of this, your gameplay tends to focus heavily on farming for a lot of the game. Um, probably about 20 minutes, it varies on the heroes. Uh, it can get, you go even longer, and in fact, you'll farm throughout the whole game, but there's a heavier emphasis at the start. And some people find that boring, some people like that a lot, so depending what you like, you may, uh, you may enjoy that. Fast reactions is a common stereotype that hard carry should have. Because you have such a target on your head and because you get a lot of gold for items and many items in Dota are active, meaning you have to use the items, people like to think that you have to have fast reactions so that when the enemy jumps on you from nowhere, you react in time and you don't just die. Because if you die, you lose a lot of net worth for your team because you were so rich. I don't, mm, kind of depends who you ask. To some extent, this is really true, but I don't want you to feel like you can't play hard carry if you don't feel like you have the fastest button pressing. You can still be a very consistent, solid hard carry player, even if you're like slower mechanically. Uh, so don't let that scare you away from playing this role, but it is like a, this is a stereotype you'll hear where it's like the young, fresh, fresh blood players who will play the, the carry positions for this reason. Now, as you play hard carry and you look to improve, some things you're gonna have to ask yourself a lot are your farming patterns. So how can you farm gold extremely efficiently? Or looking back at our little checklist of jobs to do, your priority is to get last hits and to get gold. But like we said, it's good if you do some of these other jobs, even though we don't have check marks in there. So can you farm in a way that prevents the enemy from farming? Can you farm in a way that helps to protect your towers or to allow your team to move into an area to set up vision? Things like that. That is very nuanced in the hard carry role. How do I move around the map while farming efficiently, while still doing something for my team and not just being useless, just being gone forever, getting gold, only thinking about myself. To some extent, that's your job, but you do want to help your team. And so that's one of the questions you'll have to ask yourself. Another big part is to know when to farm or to fight. Because even though I said you start out as the weakest hero, you do have impact and you can get kills. And so finding the balance between farming and fighting is something hard carries have to tackle a lot. It, it really is a tough question. And you'll feel a lot of pressure on this, I promise you. You'll be like, I think I'm supposed to farm, but I don't want to get yelled at at my team. It's very common. It's a tough question. That's something you're going to have to think on if you play the hard carry role. Next up is the mid lane. Do you like to 1v1 people, show them who's boss, crush them in the lane, and then win the game from there? This is probably your role. If you like flashy heroes, you like outplaying people, not every mid hero is like that, but many of them are. So this is probably where you want to be. You're going to start off as one of the strongest heroes in the game. Because you're by yourself in the mid lane, all of the resources there go just to you. In the side lanes, you have multiple heroes, so it's getting split up. Because of this, you end up as the strongest hero. You try to 1v1 your opponent, come out ahead, 
And then you want to use that momentum to help your team. Because you're so strong, you can easily kill other people. So you go kill them, maybe take a building off of that, things like that. You will use your momentum to help your team take a lead and win the game from there. Possibly having flashy outplays along the way. If you decide you want to be a mid laner, you're going to need to know a lot of specific matchups. There are a lot of different mid lane heroes, and every matchup is a little different. There's also a little bit of RNG or random chance in the mid lane mechanics, for better or worse. Some people hate it, some people love it. But because of this, every lane can be a bit unique, sometimes extremely unique, and it might be against a different opponent every time. So you end up needing to know a lot of very unique matchups because what you need to do will depend on who you play and then the random things that happen. So a lot of specific knowledge is needed for the mid lane. You also need to know a lot of in-game mechanics. So things like uphill mischance, creep aggro manipulation, those sort of things, those are needed for the 1v1 to take out an advantage on your enemy and then hopefully... Right, you, you won't always crush them, guys. The mid lane's not always about being one-sided. Sometimes it goes even, it's fine. But you're trying to get the advantage. And to do that, you need to know a lot of these unique mechanics. Next up is the off laner. You're a bully. That's, that's how it goes. The off laner is the last core in uh, who gets to farm, get a lot of golden resources. They start off fairly strong, and they match up against the hard carry, those weak heroes. And your goal is to beat them up. Stop them from farming. Slow down their ability to scale up and become that strong hero. No, not on your watch. You're going to kick them down and you're going to do it again and again and again and again. That's your job as the offlaner, at least at the start of the game. Later on, you become more about the team. What does my team need? But also, what do I need because I'm still a core hero? You're this transition between the position ones and twos, which focus a lot on their own play and the supports who focus on helping their cores, you're this in-between where it's like, I kind of like thinking about myself, but also I'm a nice guy. So like, what do my, what do my team need here? Uh, that's, that's you. You're in this middle ground. You tend to have some strong tanky heroes in this offlane role, but not, not all of them. Um, and right now I said it's a 2v2 meta. So two heroes versus two heroes. In the past, and what you'll still see sometimes is that it's actually the offlaner by himself against two heroes, sometimes three heroes. So then your job very much becomes, how do I not get destroyed by three heroes? How do I get any resources for myself and then have impact later? It's a very difficult position sometimes. And if you like that kind of challenge, here you go. So your gameplay is going to be surviving difficult lanes, either because it's difficult for you or because it's difficult for them because you're a bully. One, either way, like no matter what's happening, you want to cause chaos in your lane a lot of the times. Now you're going to be focused a bit on team fighting. Not always, but just a general rule for off laners. You might be buying those aura items to help out your team, thinking about what do they need? Do we need an initiator? I'll do that. Do we need someone to just be really tanky and walk in the front line? I'll do that. Those kind of team fight uh, roles that your team needs. Okay, I'll fill them in. I'm the off laner. I'll do it. Questions you're going to have to ask yourself as you play this game, how do I rotate around the map? Because the carry and the mid are focused a bit more on last hitting, you want some last hits, but you put a bit more priority on ruining the enemy team. So where do I move to stop the enemy carry, but also help out my carry? Like, where, where do I go? That kind of thing. How do I make space? That concept might be new to you if you're new to Dota. But if you think back to when I said the carry in the mid want to farm a bit and the enemy wants to stop them from doing that, space is when the enemy team has to deal with you. You're up in their face, you're causing havoc, and they're like, God, we can't just let this guy take all our buildings, we gotta go deal with him. And because they're dealing with you, they can't stop your mid or your carry. That's your role in this game. We're finally getting into the support roles in Dota, starting with the position four, soft support. The four support is a very flexible role. You can do a lot of things. We kind of mentioned that earlier. Sometimes you're in this lane. Sometimes you're in this lane. Sometimes you're in the jungle. That's kind of frowned upon though. You guys may not understand that because you're a new player, but often jungling is a frowned upon activity, but sometimes it's good and the four position might do that. Mm, you know, eh, maybe. 
That's why it's a really cool role. You can do a lot of different things depending what you like. So if none of these other roles call to you, there might be something that the position for, if you decide this is what I wanna do, there's probably a position for that does that. So if you like a lot of variability, if you like being able to move around the map, make some big flashy plays, not, not as many like small flashy plays as like the carry players, but like, boom, huge team fight, all based on what I did. You know, position fours tend to fill that role a bit. You are a support, but you're also kind of a core, you know? You get a bit more gold in the position five, and sometimes you get to focus on what you want. The position five rarely gets to do that. So if you like helping your team, but sometimes not that much, position four is more your thing. Now for your gameplay, you're going to be a pretty active hero. You're not going to usually spend too much time farming. Sometimes you will, like we said. There's a lot. It's hard to generalize Dota. You do a lot of different things in this game. You tend to be more active, though, as the position four. You start those early game actions. So if we think about the different core roles and their need to farm, they like to stay in the lanes at the beginning of the game. Because you don't need to farm, you are free to move around the lane where you're not farming. But then you're in another lane, say in the mid lane, two heroes versus one hero, you can look for a kill there. Uh, so that's what you do when you are roaming around. You're looking for those kills to uh, help your team out. Now questions you'll have to ask yourself as the position for, what do we need to do to win? Because you have so much freedom to move around, if you identify, hey, our mid laner is pretty important this game. If he has a good game, I think we'll win. You should go help him out. But other games you might decide, you know what, my off laner, he looks like a really good player. He's really crushing this matchup. Let me help him out because then maybe he'll just win the whole game on his own. This is what you can do. You identify what your team needs to win and then you have the freedom to go do that. So because of that, you end up asking yourself, what's the team need? Who should I help? Sometimes it's you. Sometimes you are the linchpin to victory. And if you get a certain item, you become unstoppable or something, or you set up a huge team fight to win the game. Sometimes that's what's gonna happen. And you're gonna need to identify that and help yourself out a little bit. Ooh, fun, I'm a support, but I'm farming, cool. That's what you get to do as the position four. Last but certainly not least is the position five. So people who are going to like this role tend to be very funny, very smart, pretty cool. Uh, typically very attractive, unrelated. This is the role I play the most. Um, but there's really not... I mean, I'll explain the role, but I don't really have to. If you're new to games, Dota 2 is a hell of a game to start with. If you're not new to team games, then you know that supporting is supporting. It's, it's not different in Dota 2 than any other game. You're going to be pretty underappreciated, even though you are a critical part of the game plan. You babysit that position one carry. We said he's the weakest at the start. A big part of your job is making sure that he takes his first steps properly, gets some of the farm he needs to begin scaling up. That's your one of your main jobs anyways. You'll help a lot with crowd control and team spells. If you like heals and saves, you're probably going to find some position fives to help you with that. You're a team player. That's just, that is how it is. You're going to have the lowest net worth, but still have equal impact. It may be hard to feel that in some games, but what the hard support does is very important in the overarching sense. Because you don't have a clear goal, like many of the other core roles of acquire net worth, kill heroes, things like that, you need a lot of game knowledge for hard supporting, at least at a very at a higher level. It's not clear sometimes, like, I swear, I am being helpful by standing right here. That can make the hard support a little confusing for new players sometimes. Because you tend to have low net worth, meaning you have no items, you have few levels, your positioning is really important. Because if people go to kill you, you just die. You don't have escapes, you don't have saving items, things like that. So how you stand in the game is very important. Where you move, where you uh, position in team fights, all of that. Your gameplay, you're going to have to know a lot about what your cores want. So this core really likes to kill people. I got to go with that guy. This guy just wants to farm a lot, so I got to go do things over here. This guy is really good at uh, high tempo pushing buildings really fast. I gotta go help here. You have to have that kind of game knowledge and what it means to enable those styles of gameplay. And so you kind of, even though you're a support player, you still need to know what your cores are up to. Cores also need to know what their supports do, but I feel that they can get away with more just knowing what they want to do. And along with that, knowing what your cores need, 
that's then going to filter down to where am I needed on the map. Uh, because again, the cores just get to go where there's gold and farm. But the hard support, it's not so clear, and that can be tougher. So that's one of the harder questions for hard support players to tackle. A very common question new players have is that they know what role they want to play, but they don't really know what heroes go in those roles. Now there is a feature through Dota Plus that will help show statistically what heroes are played in what role in general. But you have to pay for that feature. And if you're new to the game, I don't really recommend you do that. I'll put up a couple screenshots here for you so that you can see what role people play for different things. But that can still be a little difficult to navigate. So here is another website you can use. It's called Dota 2 Pro Tracker. I'm not sponsored. I just think it's, it's pretty useful for what it does. Whatever hero you want to play, let's type it in. Oh, Marana's this cool hero from the anime I just saw. So type her in, click Marana, and now it's going to show you at a pro level what people are playing Marana as. So support for 90% of games that Marana is played at at a high level is in the four support. And in fact, here are some useful starting items you might consider. Here's the most common skill build. Here are some, this is a little weird actually. That's, maybe don't build Dagons in your games, guys. Um, but here's some common items. So I think this is a very useful tool for new players. Then you can run through it. Just check, this hero looks cool. I think they're an off laner. Type them in, double check see that they're played there or not, and then you're you're good to go. So with all that said, what is the best role for beginners? Well, at the end of the day, it's my opinion that this is a video game. Then you should play what you want to play. So you like the hard carry role? Go for it. You like being a position five? Welcome. I got a whole channel for you. A special welcome to uh, all support players. So whatever role you like, you should go for that. Logistically, in Dota 2, we do tend to have a lot of safe lane and mid lane players. It's the, it's the very attractive role, all the gold, the flashiness. People tend to like that. Very typical in uh, team games. So if you want to fill a more needed role, off lane or either support roles tend to be in, in need. You'll have faster queue times, things like that. Now, having said that, I do think the side lane roles are easier to start with for a couple reasons. One, just by being in a side lane, you are exposed to other, other positions. So you play hard carry, you see what your hard support's doing. You see what the enemy offlane's doing, the enemy for support. Just by playing the game, you kind of absorb those other things by proxy. The mid lane is off by themselves. They need to know a lot of specific mechanics, matchups, things like that, and it doesn't quite help with other roles. So I think it's easier to start in the side lane, learn some of those mechanics, and then move over to the mid lane if you want to play that. Another reason I think side lane is good for new players is because even though I just explained the difference or a very basic difference between one, three, four, and five, at a beginner level, there's not. There is core and there's support. People tend to play the four and the five the exact same way and the one and the three the exact same way. And while that's bad at a high level, for new players, it's fine, especially when you don't know a lot of heroes. So if you play one side lane core, and one side lane support, you can do that no matter if you're one, three, four, or five. In the long run, don't do that. But as a new player, it's fine. You get, you get to do this. You don't know the game, so make it easy for yourself. Uh, so I think the side lane works a lot. And if you have friends showing you the ropes, play a core role. People like to suggest the support role to new players because it's not as important. I'll carry the game as the core. Which maybe that's partly true, but I also think that's very boring for new players to just watch their friends play. Oh, just stay alive and do whatever and I'll play the game. I think that's boring, guys. Come on, introduce the new players in a fun way. Let them enjoy the game. And let's be honest, core players, your role is easy to explain to new players. Don't at me. You know it's true. You just last hit things. Your new player who has no idea, hey man, just go on last hits. I'll focus on everything else. You don't even need to know what I'm doing. I will harass them, I'll do pulls, I'll do like all this other stuff, I'm warding. That's hard to explain to a new player what to do. But simply telling them to last hit here, that's easy. You should already have map awareness. And you tell them, hey, they're trying to kill you. Move into this jungle area and just farm there. And then they farm there for a bit. They're, they just like last hit things. It's easier to explain to a new player how to play core than support. In my extremely biased support player uh, opinion but I think it's true so play core roles if you got friends and that's it again <laughs> I said I just said that at the end play whatever you want guys it's a, it's a video game so thanks for watching have a good time
Enjoy Dota. Bye.